my name is Leslie Klein. I'm an artist and writer living in West Stockbridge. I want to thank producer Sherry Steiner for inviting me and CTSB for hosting this program. Um, most of my previous published writing have been op-ed and feature stories for various newspapers and magazine. Um, this book, Driving Through Paintings, is my first book of poetry published by Shanti Arts Press. Um, it's part memoir, part ode to the natural world, and part road trip to, uh, through landscapes and experiences that have inspired me. So the first poem I'm going to read is Magic. I believe in magic. I see it everywhere, from butterfly metamorphose to bird migration. Magical feasts of strength, determination, patience, and crafting. I see magic in spider webs stringing, bird nest weaving, hummingbird hovering, seedlings pushing through soil. I believe in the magic of birth itself, mothers cradling young within their bodies or hatching eggs that crack with life. I see magic in the daily tricks of dawn and dusk, painting color on the sky, the deep black of night splattered with sparkling light. Rainbows reaching across clouds, bridging the horizon, the scent of flowers in a burst of bloom, bees storing honey in waxy combs, the death of fall, chill of winter white, music and color reappearing in spring, summer's sultry buzz. This next poem was written after one of those long nights with a friend into the evening where you talk about everything. And in this particular evening, my friend was lamenting the fact that he wasn't an artist. And so I wrote him this poem. I sent him this letter. An artist captures the absolute in his hands, stroking its color on canvas. A musician transforms energy into tones harmonious to existence. A dancer moves the unmanifest through her limbs in expression of life. You are an artist yourself, composing your world from the impulses received from within. By expressing your true nature, you are stroking your brush on creation. That is art. We are all artists, casting spells here and there, leaving a part of ourselves somewhere as a sculptor marks a stone. This next poem, which is also the title of the book, Driving Through Paintings, again, the result of um, conversations with a friend of mine who goes to every museum and gallery show in New York and it fills her. And I realized that my galleries and my museums are my long back road rides through the landscape, hence driving through paintings. Oh, there is a rhythm to the road, so there is a rhythm to this poem. Driving through paintings. Driving through paintings of ribbon roads and jasper fields, of red barns with green silage, paintings of pink sunsets and orange pumpkin patches stroking garden plots with color. Driving through paintings of osprey, hawk, dove, and kestrel, soaring over pastures of cows, black and white on the landscape. Paintings of bison, breathing white smoke in wintry air, bounding over hills in flowing formation, like starlings swirl in unison through sky. Driving through paintings of covered bridges and fishermen angling on riverbeds in deep boots, paintings of sea coves with placid ocean at low tide, woodland paths of pine cover and sun-splashed pond, where lily pads float serenely, floral passengers in tow. 
driving through paintings of steep mountain roads with red autumn color, curving sharply toward rivers far below, waterfalls foaming white. Paintings of small towns with Victorian houses where the smell of morning coffee resides. Driving through paintings of apple orchards with gracefully shaped trees, of crooked fence posts and arching elms. Paintings of mountain backdrops and lattice bridges, slivers of lake reflecting sunlight. Driving through paintings of hay bales patterned on pastures, rotund giants of food for the sweet-faced ewes and brown-eyed Guernseys. Paintings of men on tractors, bare-chested and suntanned, harvesting corn from the lush, vast fields. And this is a love poem. My man of the earth. He is of the earth, feet planted in the soil of his beginnings, brought to nature's wonder of brooks and fishing, mountains and deer trails, cows and heifers, barn cats and princey. Far from city life, flourishing in nature's arms, he could forget sorrows revealed after coming to this beautiful place. My man of the earth crafts the land with an eye for the shrub to be saved, trillium to be nourished, weed to be pulled to redefine this sacred space, created delightedly, forging along the green paths he has nurtured and nipped at so diligently. This man of the earth is sweet and gentle, strong and wise. He drives me through mountain passes, along golden fields and lake vistas. He brings flowers for no reason, leads me to wild plants discovered on wooden paths at Brook's Edge. My man of the earth walks tall, head brushing foliage in high trees. Lifeless branches are pruned on his amble through leafy domain, noting the fruit and small blooms that accompany each plant, remembering their place to safeguard and encourage their growth. He is of the earth. Uh, this poem needs no explanation. I think you'll know what it's about. On that day, we awoke that morning to the clearest sky, sun illuminated on deep sapphire waters of Lake Champlain. Sitting on the porch of our rented cottage, we delighted in the King Fisher's diving antics, blue heron's slow motion steps, emerald headed drake gliding, the smells and sounds of first light. Sipping coffee in this paradise, beaming at each other, exultant on this shining new day. I am so happy. Life is so good, we whisper in our reverie, witnessing our world of picture-perfect calm. Soon our peace would collapse as we learn about the planes heaving destruction at our towers, wreaking an inferno of death and shock to the unsuspecting city. How could it be that at the same moment we were blissfully in peace and optimism, this dreadful death landed on our shores? Life imposes unanswerable questions. For how many infants were born into love? How many lovers enthralled, painters inspired, dancers soaring at the same instant as we were suspended in a gleaming joy on that day. A new day. As the birds awake to sing in concert this morning, the nocturnal journey of the barred owl with their young is setting. Both choruses intermingle. The pulsing hoots like the rhythm drum play a steady beat as the rise and fall of the songbird's harmonic flourishes set the morning melody in place. The edge of day and night resound with music, 
even with the sky still dark and the moon's light diminished. Since we just finished celebrating Thanksgiving, I thought I would read a poem about a childhood Thanksgiving. It's called Giving Thanks. Leo, she's only a baby, my grandmother cried out to her son, whose hand was raised to spank me. I had burned our rug, leaving two ashen marks on its white nap. Grandma saved me with those words. Dad dropped his hand, acknowledging my innocence and age, for it was his golden cigarette lighter that called to me that day a magical totem that I watched him fondle, creating a flame, blue and orange, to light his smoke. I had my chance to investigate this Thanksgiving. Mom was holed up in the kitchen, chopping, mixing, baking. I was alone. As I probed this golden treasure, the light suddenly flickered brightly. My young mind and hands did not understand how to extinguish the flame before it dropped to the shag. My naive logic didn't realize that the tissues I ran for would not put out the blaze. Instead, they burst forth in their own fire, floating down to the floor. It is a wonder I wasn't burned. It is a wonder I didn't make a sound to distract my mother from her cooking labors. Somehow the fire died and I guiltily schemed a cover-up. Pillows gathered from the bedroom were placed atop the black scars. I sprawled upon them after switching on the television to innocently watch Howdy Doody. I vowed to remain in this spot all night. Even when Grandma, Dad, and my uncles arrived, I was frozen. As dinner time approached, I was called to the table. The requests went unheeded as I feigned interest in Clarabelle and Princess Summer, Fall, Winter, Spring. They could wait no longer. It was time to eat. My frustrated father reached down for my hand, pulling me up from my lair. I stiffened and picked up the pillows and... Gasps and shrieks filled the room. I was numb. All was a blur. I could not speak. Dad raised his hand, but Grandma's voice admonishing her son cracked my stoic silence. I cried, yet I was saved on that day of Thanksgiving. Uh... This next two poems are related to my art. I'm a clay artist and sculptor. And this first poem sort of describes the way I feel about clay itself. It seems to survive uh, centuries and is used to determine the history of most cultures on archaeological digs. So this, this poem is called Ancient Visions. Ancient artifacts placed on altars and adorning walls are primitive reminders of when tool, message, and tribute were refined by hand. Clay lifted from riverbanks, color from crushed stone or berry, message and imagery incised with twig or bone. These expressions, created with heft and brawn, are imbued forever with the presence of their makers. I too mingle clay and tribute into my visions of my own history. Unearthed in a distant era, these days will be relics of time, my artifacts ancient. Firing. The kill is loaded. All the new pieces sit on shelves held aloft by stilts. It is a mystery as each form changes while exposed to intense heat. They shrink and crawl ever so slightly as the hours fade toward the firing's end, transformed to a hardened beauty. As the timer ticks for the first hour of the kill's progress, I think about tomorrow at its opening, 
lifting out these bones of a new creation. A minor touch here, a movement there, has changed it, birthing new meaning to the work, a chance to revision what the wet clay had murmured. This new canvas, bleached white from the fire, receives paint drips and brush strokes along its smooth and textured body, complete only when the colors merge onto its sculpted skin. <clears throat> trees. If trees could speak, they would tell tales of history, family, love, life, death. They would mark anniversaries, divulge legends of kisses under their boughs in the moonlight, speak of kittens stranded on high branches, cries of mothers witnessing the hanging of a son. They would reveal scars from lightning strikes, recall pain from a heart carved with love, chat about woodpecker holes, butterfly chrysalis hanging from branches, overlooking once grassy trails, now transporting intruding vehicles. If trees could speak, they would impart a wisdom cultivated by the years, an understanding of the cycles of life ever in flux, hard to capture to retain the pureness of their being. Desolation. Our neighbors raped their forested land to a barren ground dotted with severed tree stumps and the promise of erosion in the pristine brook meandering their terrain to property below this gash on the landscape. On its way down, a pond filled with silt, a dam of muck and twig formed in another, while bird, deer, coyote, Owl, turkey, squirrel, chipmunk, bobcat, bear, and other fugitives of this desolate property left homes inhabited for decades. This next poem was written after seeing a televised fundraiser after Hurricane Sandy. Concert Hurricane. A storm of youthful memories uprooted last night as each beat and strum transported us to the days when our music was born. Rockers still in leather played with wild reverence, their smiles capturing each moment of pleasure the soulful melody inspired. Generous collaboration pulsed on the stage. A wind of diverse voices sang poetry beat drums and guitar chords. Horn blowers called rhythms to the crowd, joyfully dancing to each note. Uplifted by the tempest of harmonies and vibration, we were one with all who witnessed this musical wonder last night. Um, the sun on our trail. Take a ride with us. We'll bring you to the sun. We'll curve around narrow roadways toward blue sky and mountain silhouette, backlit in white, defining soft peaks so distant. We always find the sun. Even on dark days, cloudy and drizzled, the sky will open, guiding us in light through vibrant countryside, savoring each view as the day turns. Later, on our journey home, the sky darkens to the somber hue we had left hours before. The sun always finds us. Let's go for a ride. So I thought that I would break from reading from my book right now and read a couple of uh, more recent poems. Uh, this first one was written and inspired by uh, the pandemic. 
Um, this was written in the early stages of the pandemic when everything was upside down and topsy-turvy. And uh, uh, it was published in the Berkshire Eagle and picked up by Mark Fisher from the Washington Post, um, who referenced it in a story that he was writing about this subject matter. It's called Toilet Paper Blues. I ain't got nothing, oh woe is me. The store shelves are bare of necessities. Fear took the helm, driving shopping to insanity. So a cushion of paper gives a sense of security. We hear the lament from the streets and high places that no one can purchase these rolls, even in cases. There are networks created to scope out supplies so those who are searching can make needed buys. I heard that a store in Egremont has some rolls in supply until they're not. A package will ship to another household from a warehouse providing to stores, I am told. The shipment will arrive who knows when, just as soon as there is product to send. There is humor in this we will realize after, with stories to tell in the future with laughter. New generations will learn of this time when our citizens went crazy, standing in line, their shopping carts overflowing with toilet paper sublime. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> before I read this last poem, I uh, want to again thank Sherry and CTSB for hosting this. And uh, if anyone is interested in learning more about my art or the book, they can go to leslieklinestudio.com. So this last poem is a poem for the season. Season of Light. This season is ripe with festivity, ancestral rituals of joy, love, peace, merge with ancient customs, honoring a celestial pattern of solar rebirth. In this season of light, the sun commences to lengthen our days. We remember the starlight guiding sages to the child. The festival of light celebrates the enduring lamp oil, illuminating a new beginning for a people. All who gather are entwined in this web of winter wonder. Light the candles, incense, and yule log. The bright spirit of yearly rejoicing is upon us. Thank you. Mm -hmm.